hi guys welcome today we will take a look at RTC which is real-time counter and uh, today we will see how we can work on the real-time counter uh, previously we have seen how the timers work so real-time counter is basically a timer which is connected with a low power low frequency clock RTC module is basically made for low power development so we use RTC module for working with uh, some timing tasks that uh, are required in our normal applications and uh, we will use the RTC instead of other general purpose timers. General purpose timers take a lot of uh, battery. They use high frequency clocks. So we use them only when we need uh, some precision in our timing measurements. So for normal tasks, uh, RTCs are the best choice. And in RTC, RTC is basically the backend hardware uh, which works uh, on the uh, top layer of application timers. Before we start to program the RTC module, let's see the internal architecture of RTC. So here we can see the internal architecture of RTC and we have a prescaler, a counter and we have four channels for compare and uh, we use these channels for comparison operations. So we will see how we can do, how we can use these channels and uh, they, are, they work similar to the timers. So like in general purpose timers, we have seen that they all of the general purpose timers have uh, some uh, channels and we can use these uh, each channel for a separate comparison operation and each uh, operation can uh, generate some events and uh, we will see how we can use the, the similar task with the RTC uh, we, we will see how we can do that in the RTC module as well the RTC is using 32.768 kilohertz frequency and it's a low power clock so RTC uses this uh, low power clock and uh, uh, we can use this prescaler register to scale down our clock tick events. In this uh, RTC, we can generate three types of uh, events. One is the tick event, which is basically the prescaler. And uh, the second one is the comparison. Whenever a comparison operation occurs, we can uh, use that as an event. And the third one is uh, the overflow. So we will see how we can work with these events. Basically, the, to calculate the tick events, we have to use this simple formula. And in this formula, you can see uh, 32.768 is uh, divided by the prescaler plus 1. And uh, basically, this is a basic formula. And we can see uh, here in the table, if we don't uh, use any prescaler value, then we can see the finest resolution that we can get from this timer is uh, 30.517 microseconds. So you can see and uh, it's a 24-bit counter so we can generate an overflow event up to 512 seconds. If we use this prescaler 2 to the power 8 minus 1 which is uh, 255. So if we use that for the prescaler so we can we can see we can generate 131072 seconds. And uh, if we use the prescaler as 4096 which is basically 4096 minus 1 which is basically 4095. Uh, we can generate 582 hours approximately uh, this time for the overflow and uh, the each tick each tick is going to be 125 milliseconds longer so you can see here we can use these uh, low power and low frequency timers to generate the events on uh, ticks and we can also generate the event on comparison and we can generate the event on the overflow as well so the overflow is uh, not uh, normally used because uh, you can see here the overflow is a very long period of time. So normally we use the comparison and the uh, ticked events. Let's program it and see how we can uh, manage these events. So let's see how we can uh, program it. So first of all, let's create a new project. So I will go into my computer and here uh, go into the windows and uh, as we have uh, extracted our NRF SDK here so we will go in this SDK and uh, we will go in the examples and uh, go into the peripheral from here we will just copy the RTC so copy this and uh, go into my projects folder paste it here so let's rename it as RTC so I will open this folder and uh, if you are using an RF52832 go into PCA10040 and go into the blank Sagar Embedded Studio folder and open the EM project file 
Once this file is open, let's remove some of the stuff. Let's remove everything. Zoom in a little so you can see everything here. Okay, we are good to go. So first of all, let's uh, see if the RTC module is uh, in initialized and in enabled. So if you are using uh, if you are using the RTC module in some other code, be sure to include these drivers. And uh, also, you need to see the settings as well. So go into the SDK config, right click here and open the CMC's configuration wizard. Once you open the CMC's configuration wizard, open the drivers and uh, look here in the RTC. And uh, whichever instance you want to use, you will have to enable it. For now, I want to use the RTC2 because RTC0 and RTC1 are mostly used in the soft devices. So. Uh, RTC0 is used for the events of soft device and uh, RTC1 is used in the application timers so it's a common it's a good practice to use the RTC2 uh, because uh, whenever you are going to use the Bluetooth communication uh, you will not have uh, these two timers available for you so you will be using RTC2 so keep in mind that we have to enable the legacy drivers otherwise uh, the legacy drivers are the main drivers if they are not enabled uh, for example here you can see RTC 0 is enabled so from this example we can see here that RTC 0 will work once it is enabled by the legacy drivers so I'm just going to enable the RTC 2 for this and uh, I will enable it here as well just to make sure everything works okay and uh, save this once it's saved let's start programming it the first thing we have to do here is we have to create a RTC handle. So to do that, okay. Once the handle is created, uh, we have to create two functions uh, to make sure everything works okay. If you are using the soft device, then you don't need to configure the low frequency clock so we need uh, to configure the low frequency clock let's create a simple function that we initialize the low frequency clock we have seen the same code in the application timer so if you are not sure what's this you can just uh, look back in the application timers as well this is just going to initialize the low, per low frequency clock which is uh, going to be used uh, with these timers Okay, once the clock is initialized, we need to configure the RTC and uh, of course we need uh, uh, of course we are going to need an uh, interrupt handler. So first let's uh, create a function that's going to configure all the RTC settings. First of all, we need to define a struct uh, which is going to hold all the configurations for RTC. The next thing is we are just going to configure the RTC prescaler. Okay, we have uh, done the configurations and uh, the remaining configurations are, are by default. The next thing is we need to initialize the RTC module, so we are just going to use this. Pass the handle. The first thing is to pass the handle. Second thing is we need to pass the configuration. It's similar to timers. And the third thing is we need to pass it the uh, interrupt handler. So for now, we haven't created any interrupt handler, so let's create one here.
we can easily check which interrupt is occurring uh, either is from compare or is from uh, overflow or this uh, interrupt is from uh, the tick event so we will perform some actions here so let's see let's first configure the rtc so we can see how it's working once we have passed the handler to enable the rtc to ma make it stop working we need to use another function which is enable rtc so this will enable the rtc and here we will pass the handle okay everything is initialized and uh, one thing left here we need to use the leds so to use the leds i am just going to include the bsp package it's already included post.h so i'm uh, just going to use the bsp's led initialization function and then i'm just going to call the leds turn on and turn off functions so so the leds are initialized so we can just easily use a simple function to toggle them and uh, for the led i'm just going to define some pin number okay so our initial code is done here so let's see uh, call this low frequency clock configuration we need to just call these configuration functions here and the last thing is to configure the RTC if you are curious about these instructions uh, we will see them later on in later on to, uh, in another tutorial where we will discuss the power management uh, these uh, instructions are basically uh, putting the processor to sleep so the processor is sleeping and uh, whenever an uh, interrupt is generated the processor wakes up and perform the instructions so let's see how it works so first of all let's build this code to see if everything is okay oops i missed something i forgot to put and here so make sure you put the and it's the address and not the okay everything is good to go one thing i missed here is we need to enable the rtc tick so let's enable it and pass it the uh, RTC handle along with true okay we are good to go so we will click on the build and uh, then connect and then we will erase the device and download it and uh, as you can see now the LED is blinking uh, because uh, we have enabled the RTC tick so now after every tick there is an interrupt being occurred and uh, in that interrupt we are handling the LED toggling task okay guys that's it for today hope so you have learned something new today and uh, be, if you are new to my channel be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the bell icon to get the notifications on time and I will be uploading new videos so you can get notified on time and I hope so you like this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.